styling links is one of the more common things you'll do on your projects. And this, the default link is kind of ugly, right? They're blue uh, with an underline on them. And if you've visited a link, it actually changes from blue to purple. And most of the time we don't actually want that. Like if you're Google search results and you click on a link and you go back, you wanna be able to keep track of the links you've clicked on. So the color changing makes sense there. Most websites aren't just lists of links. The color just tends to stay the same. Uh, so we're gonna look at how we can do that. And there's a new type of selector we're gonna to have to learn. But first of all, the simple thing. We have a link. If we look at a link, it's just our A tag. We have an href on there. The href doesn't matter. What matters is the element in this case. So we can go to our styles and I'm gonna go right here and do A and we can just change the color of it. Color is now going to be, uh, let's just make it white so it actually disappears. <laughs> just so we can see it's, it's, it's there, but we can't see it. You don't wanna do that, obviously. Uh, we've actually looked at this in a much earlier lesson too, where I suggested you change the color, or I didn't suggest, but I said, if you want it to inherit the text color, we can use the A and then color inherit. And the interesting thing is when we change the color of a link to whatever we change it to, it will no longer have that purple visited color. It's now just red. And if I visit that page, it was already purple. I knew that I'd visited. Uh, let's down here too though. If I visit this other page and I go back here, the colors aren't changing. This is the color of it. If you do want to have a visited color, you still can. Uh, again, it's not often you will have this, but we have to use something called a pseudo class to be able to do this. And so for that, I'm gonna do an A and then we're gonna do visited. And let's say the color on our visited is going to be something that stands out a little more. Let's just say that it goes to blue now. So it's very different from the red one. So you can see these links are actually ones I visited before. So if I click on it, I've been there. Now these are blue because it's, it's pages I've been to before and they're in my browsing history. If I go and I change this, I'm gonna make it a link that doesn't actually work because it's not gonna exist. Uh, let's say getting started new <laughs> and I refresh my page it's red because I've never been to that page before. And if it's one I have visited because it's in my browsing history, I can see that it's blue. And again, this is one that you generally won't use too often, but I'm gonna leave it here just for educational purposes for now and talk about why as we look at some of the other ones. Because another one that you're gonna have is, and we're gonna put it down here, the A hover. This is the one you're gonna style very often. So A hover, we're gonna say color is going to be uh, purple. And let's refresh. And now it's a blue link because it's been visited. And now when I hover on top, it's changing to purple. And it's not the easiest thing to see. So let's have it change to yellow, which means we won't be able to read it because <laughs> it's gonna be too light, but it definitely makes it obvious that we're changing, right? And usually you wanna have some sort of hover color on there. It just helps the user know that it is something that's interactive. We're so used to things that when you hover on top that you can click on that there is a bit of a change there. So having a hover color on there can be very useful. If you are going to put a hover color, the other thing I would suggest you also do is put an A focus visible. Uh, there's a lot of people who will keyboard navigate through sites. So if they're you know, we're at the top of the page, I can push tab on my keyboard and it's gonna go to the first link or first item that I can interact with. And then I can push tab and it goes down to the next one. And it adds always this outline around there. Do not remove the outline. I'm not even gonna show you how to do it because you shouldn't do it. Uh, just because it makes it much easier to keyboard navigate when the outline is there. But we also wanna bring in this color that's changing things as well. Uh, so obviously don't make your text yellow and un unreadable, but I just wanted to highlight that whether I'm tabbing through or I'm doing it the other way, this is working. And this brings up a bit of a different selector that I haven't actually talked about where you can have multiple selectors doing the same thing that are just comma separated. So a nice little bonus tip uh, while we're here. So my hover state and focus visible. Most of the time, if you're doing a hover state, you'll also wanna have your focus visible state on there as well. You might also come across future tutorials that use focus instead. I'm not gonna get into the difference in this lesson between focus and focus visible. Just know that focus is the old way of doing it. Focus visible is the newer feature that was added and it's actually the default in all browsers now. They've replaced all their focus states with focus visible. It's just a little bit of a better option. So trust me with this one, go with it. I'll put a link uh, somewhere to also let you, you know, go, let you go into the difference between the two of them because I've talked about it uh, a fair amount on, in a previous YouTube video. And we're gonna do one more, which is our A active. And active, what we're going to do is let's make it, we're gonna do a color of black on there. Again, just so we have a very obvious difference between our different states. So I'm gonna refresh my page. When I hover, it goes from the visited color, or if we didn't have the visited, we could also go to just our red color that's right there. So we have the red goes to my hover state 
and then if I click, as long as I'm holding down, it's going to be black and it will only leave that active state when I go out. You know, most of the time when people click on links, they click very fast. So it's not very long, but you can see you still get that little flash that shows up. And sometimes people use this for more advanced techniques along the way uh, as well. So up to you if you want to use active, I would suggest often having hover states on things. And again, up to you on if you wanna have the visited or not. On most websites, I find it's not common practice to actually use them though. But I do wanna mention that I had them in a specific order here on purpose. Because if you remember, there is an order to how CSS works, the thing at the bottom wins. So if I take my active color and I put it over here and I refresh my page and I click, it's never turning black. Think about why for a second. See if you can figure it out. But okay, what it is, is when I'm hovering on top of it, it means my mouse is on top of that link. When I click down, it's active, but I'm still hovering on top of it. Like both of these are true at the same time. And because they're both true, this one here is winning because it's coming last. And it's the same here. If I did visited and I put visited as my last one here, now I refresh my page and I don't even have a hover state because I'm hovering, but it's also visited and visited is the last one at the bottom. And because both of these things are true, it's taking the last one. So the order, if you're going to use all of them should always be visited, then your hover state, and then you're active at the end. And as long as they're in that order, you can have all three of them. As long as you refresh your page, you have your regular state or my visited state, then you have a hover state. And then we have the active one that's coming in. So one of the reasons order is very important when you're writing CSS. Now, as far as this project goes, <laughs> we don't need the active on there. Uh, we don't, definitely don't need that one there. And we wanna come in with some specific colors. So I want this color right here, which is a green color. And I didn't provide a hover color, but often what I do is I take the same color and then I modify it a little bit. And VS Code does have this color picker. So if I just hover on top of the color, I can just come through and make a bit of a change. It doesn't have to be too drastic, but just something so there's like enough of a change. Maybe that's a little bit too subtle actually. We'll we'll shift this over a bit more. Um, Cause we're already getting the hand symbol. We already have the underline. So just a subtle little change that maybe again, maybe it's a bit too, we'll, we'll shift the shade a little bit while we're here. We have teals and other stuff coming in our site. So it depends how subtle you wanna get with that effect. Again, you wanna make it kind of obvious, but uh, you can play around with that a little bit and find a color that works for you.